Hello, welcome to Local Edition. I'm Leslie Layton. Today we're taking a look into the workings of San Bernardino County with uh, Janice Rutherford. She is a San Bernardino County Board of Supervisors uh, member representing the second district. Yes. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, when we all filled out the uh, census forms, a lot of people might wonder, what is this good for? Where is this going? Uh, now we're finding an application for this in the redistrict redistricting that's going on in the county. Tell us about that. Well, we have a principle in this country, one person, one vote. So that means you have to make sure the populations of districts, county supervisorial districts in this case, are equal so that everyone has equal representation. So every 10 years we take a look at the census, we take a look at how our districts are drawn, and we reallocate so that every each of the five supervisors has about the same number of constituents. The population has changed significantly over the last 10 years, so how will this change uh, the county of San Bernardino? It means for a district like mine, the second district, I have to lose 20,000 population somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but my neighboring supervisor, who represents the Ontario area, needs to gain 40,000. So he's going to come into my district, it pushes my district boundaries out a little, and then I'm going to have to make up that 20,000 somewhere. So it changes the dynamics of uh, who your supervisor is and uh, lets us all work together in, in different ways because we've represented communities together that are now apart or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Maybe the way you represent the people in your district as well. And whether I'm representing a community that is an incorporated city or unincorporated. The unincorporated areas take a lot more of my time and attention and the cities are a little more self-sustaining. Uh, food trucks are uh, very popular in Los Angeles and Orange Counties, but they're banned in San Bernardino County, and you would like to change that. Tell us about that. I found out that they were banned very early on after being elected. We're one of only two counties in the state that completely, completely bans them. I think if the other 56 counties have figured out how to make them work, we can too, and so I'm working with my colleagues to try to bring that about, and I'm hopeful that the cities will want to embrace them. There's certainly a culture of people who travel all the way to L.A. to eat at these trucks, and they'd love to be able to do that locally. So I'm, we, we're going to be working on that over the next several months. Pension reform is a very hot button issue and you are calling for some pension reform, but what does that look like to you and how far would you go with it? Well, it's frustrating in San Bernardino County. We know we need pension reform. We have a lot of people working in that direction. So we have our labor units that even understand we need to make some changes. But because we're covered by a particular law called the 1937 Act, we can't make a lot of those changes on our own. We have to wait for the state to change the law to allow us to do that. So the state legislature is currently considering a lot of different alternatives that we need to look at as they do them. Uh, increasing the age. Government pensions now start at 50 or 55, whereas most people are working till 65 or 70. Uh, we might need to cap the overall amount you receive in a pension so that we don't have so many people in that $100,000 club when they're not even working. Mm -hmm. uh, we might need to do a, a second tier so that as new employees come in, they're in more of a 401k or annuity style pension. There's a lot of different alternatives that we can look at and it doesn't have to be just defined contribution or just defined benefit. We can come up with something that really works for our county if we all work together, if labor listens, if we listen and uh, with what the state legislature does, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to make the system more sustainable than I believe it is today. San Bernardino no different from many other counties throughout the state running a budget deficit. How bad is it and what are you going to do to compensate for it? Well, I'll have more precise figures next week when I get our budget presentation from our CEO. Right now my understanding is we're looking at closing a gap of about $50 million. Um, that's on our discretionary funding of a little over $400 million. So it's a significant amount of what we do. And we're asking uh, employees to contribute by paying part of their pension. Uh, we're hoping that they will all be willing to do that so that we don't have to take the kind of drastic service cuts and personnel cuts that would otherwise be required. Uh, but if all the employees don't participate, we will have to look at those service reductions because it's just math. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Janice Rutherford, thank you very much for being here and thank updating you for having us me. on Always a pleasure. Video. All right, and thank you for tuning in. Stay with us for HLN next.